After almost five decades, we are still fighting the war on drugs. And what do we have to show for it? With 2.1 million people currently incarcerated, our prison population is the largest in the world. Last year, more people died from overdoses than American troops killed during the Vietnam War. In some communities, preventable disease among people who use drugs remains at epidemic levels. If this war is about controlling drugs, can we really say that we're winning? So in the United States, they have sold us this idea that drug prohibition means that we are controlling drugs. We see now in the overdose crisis, there's a necessity for us to talk about removing criminal penalties and eventually talking about what does regulation look like. Imagine a country that once suffered from record-breaking overdose deaths. Now imagine that country figuring out a solution that not only worked to prevent those overdose deaths, but also to help people who use drugs get treatment on demand if they wanted it. And that country is the United States of America. Portugal. Portugal was in the midst of an overdose crisis. Its prisons were bulging at the seams with people jailed for little more than simple drug possession. HIV rates among people who use drugs were the highest in all of Europe. Portugal had a serious problem. Faced with a decision, the country could either keep doing the same thing, filling its jails and burying its people, or they could try something new. We had a problem, and we put together a group of experts that knew the problem we had, knew the society we had, knew the tools we had to eventually address the problem. And then they made recommendations that were feasible in our society. Portugal made the decision to decriminalize the personal use of all drugs. And while decriminalization may sound complex, it's actually pretty simple to understand. Portugal removed criminal penalties, things like jail time, police records, and large sanctions for possession of small amounts of drugs. Drugs still aren't legal, but if you're caught with them, Portugal focuses on your health rather than jail time. The dissuasion commissions are operated solely out of the Ministry of Health. There's no criminal justice arm to them. And if you're a person who uses drugs and appears in front of the dissuasion commission, you are given access to treatment on demand. If you don't want to or can't stop using drugs, harm reduction services are available to anyone who needs them. Portugal began looking at the problem through the lens of health and safety in 1998. Under decriminalization, the framework to deal with problematic drug use was moved from the Ministry of Justice to the Ministry of Health, an agency far better qualified to deal with the complex needs of people who use drugs. We are replacing courts, but the way we work is completely different from the court system because we work under the Ministry of Health. So you do not need a judge to decide upon those cases. It can be, for example, a sociologist, like I am, like myself. My focus when I see a drug user in front of me is health issues. By putting healthcare first, Portugal adapted their system to address the needs of their population, including people who use drugs. Overdoses declined, new HIV infections declined, as did rates of infection for viral hepatitis. Violent crime decreased, as did teenage and problematic drug use. And people's access to drug treatment increased by 60%. The results weren't perfect, but they were pretty good. We cannot end drug use. It's part of our societies, it's part of our lives. Many times people say uh, we cannot regulate drugs or we cannot legalize drugs because they are dangerous. Cars are dangerous. Technologies are, are dangerous. Facebook is dangerous. Is prohibition the solution? I don't think so. What the US could take away is that understanding that we actually need to deal with people, not with drugs. And that in reality, what we claim to be a war on drugs is in fact a war on people. And because of that, they're actually getting more of what they want, which is better people living better, healthier lives, and less drugs. It's hard to imagine a world where people who use drugs aren't met with punishment. The US has spent enormous resources escalating the war on drugs. But in Portugal, the model doesn't just exist. It's actually proof of the possibilities. Portugal is just one example of drug decriminalization throughout Europe and Latin America that shows us it's possible. What we need is for you all to believe we can make it happen together right here in this country. It's time to end the over-reliance of the criminal justice system to deal with a public health issue. It's time to decriminalize drugs 
right here in America, right now.